So in my last couple of videos, and actually in person it happens a lot, people always ask me about the super amp that you see sitting here behind me. It's been my favorite amp for the last two years that I've owned it, and I use it for pretty much every musical gig that I have. Um, it's a great pedal platform, it cuts through a mix well, and it looks beautiful on stage. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about that, how I like to use the amp, and I'll take you along with me. If you have any questions for me that I haven't answered in the video, as always, make sure you leave them in the comment section down below and I'll get back to it. The Supro 1622 RT is a great small amp. It's 25 watts of class A power. It's got four 12AX7s in the preamp section. It's got two 6973 tubes in the power amp section. Now, if you don't know those tubes, they're similar to 6L6s, but a little bit improved upon in that they're warmer and the gain is a little bit more linear. You'll be able to find them in vintage Supros. This one's a reissue. You'll be able to find them in vintage Supros of the 60s and Magnetone and Gretsch amps of that era as well. Um, the amp is a 10 inch speaker and it's got this great low mid-range uh, drive that really helps you cut through the mix. I love the sound of it. It's light, it's easy to carry around, it looks great on stage and it's been my favorite amp. I can't wait to show you how it sounds. Now as far as the controls go, it's a pretty simple amp. It's single channel which means that there's no built-in distortion. If you want the amp to overdrive, however, it will do that itself. Just turn the master volume past 12 o'clock or so, throw a tube screamer or a boost in front of it, and that thing screams. But it's so loud that I might get kicked out. However, stay tuned to the end of this video and we'll get there. Um, the EQ controls on board are very simple as well. Just two, one for treble, one for bass. Again, the Supro amp is known, the whole brand is just known for having this great mid-focus sound and you wouldn't want to change that. Now even though it is a relatively small amp, I do end up turning the bass down on it. It has plenty of that on its own, surprisingly, and I turn the treble up a bit. The remaining three controls will have to deal with the reverb and tremolo circuits, which are what the letters RT in the model number stand for. Now what's unconventional about this is that the reverb is actually sent into the tremolo as opposed to the other way around. Um, if you look at Fender amps, usually it's the tremolo circuit being fed into the reverb, but on this, You've got a great dark sounding spring reverb with a single mix control being fed into a true tube tremolo circuit with depth controls and speed controls. And of course you can control the reverb and tremolo with an additional foot switch if you choose to. So lastly and probably most importantly you're going to be hearing this amp through a Sennheiser E609. Uh, it's got a great top end response so this will be placed right in front of the speaker a little bit off center to get the direct sound. Behind it, a few inches back, we're going to put the Audio-Technica 2020. Uh, it's a microphone with a great low-end response and a full sound. So I'm going to mix them together about 50-50, and that's what you'll be hearing. It's going through a Focusrite interface and into Logic. So to start, we have a 2009 PRS McCarty. It's a Les Paul-style guitar with PAF-style pickups in it. It's been my old faithful for the last seven years or so, and this is what it sounds like. Overdrive with this guitar, I like to use a Wampler Euphoria, which is a Dumble style overdrive, and this is how that sounds. <laughs>
This is my 2018 Gibson SG Special that I got a few weeks ago, and I said I'd use it in more videos, so this is what this sounds like. The mini humbucker is a little bit lower output, a little bit more high end. This is my 1998 Mexican Stratocaster with plenty of modifications done to it. It might be too much to go into detail here, uh, but if you want to hear me talk about this a little bit, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm going to play it mostly on the neck pickup here. With this guitar, I really enjoy using the J-Rocket Archer Icon. It's the gold version. It's basically a clon style overdrive, so it adds a little bit more treble and a little bit of breakup. Lastly, we're going to switch to the bridge pickup here and we're going to hear it through my favorite fuzz. It's the Electro Harmonics Op Amp Muff. This is my pride and joy. It's an Eastman AR810, solid wood, full hollow body guitar with a floating pickup. It's a jazz guitar, and this is what this sounds like. Thank you. 
Now, lastly, I don't have the guitar with me, but I do own a sweet Ibanez Talman. It's a Telecaster style guitar. It's pretty affordable, actually, but it has a great sound. So uh, since I don't have it with me, I'm just going to put some video clips in right now of a previous video. A lot of the music I play is really heavy on the reverb and delays, so I'm going to put some samples in now, and you can hear how this amp takes that. get on to the last section of this video which I know is what everyone's been looking forward to make sure if you play at loud volumes if you play music often you have a good set of earplugs these are very affordable it's by a company called Eargasm which I'm not affiliated with whatsoever um, but hearing damage is for life and always protect it and also if you've enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel and leave the video a like because I'm probably gonna be evicted after this and I'll see you next time mm -hmm.